I don't know if you noticed, but the jumper cables you buy nowadays are pretty awful and they feel pretty light too. If you have a lot of equipment or tractors or lawnmowers, you know that you've bought new pairs and you can only get like two or three uses out of them before they don't work. Why is that? They're not copper. They're only electroplated copper and you can tell by how light they are. This is just aluminum wire that's electroplated with a tiny thin layer of copper. The clamps here, these look like copper right here. Most people would think these are copper, but they're not. They're just electroplated steel and you can stick a magnet right to them. And the problem with this is after they work the first couple of times you try and use them, they work pretty good. They'll conduct like 10, 20, 30 amps. But after a couple of uses, probably three to five, they won't work at all. And that's because the aluminum corrodes really quick or the copper electroplating wears off the steel part right here. So I'm gonna show you in this video how to make these amazing and how to make them so they will last your entire lifetime. You could take a $12 pair of jumper cables like this and make them work excellent forever. So just to mention, you might be thinking, well, why not just spend a little more on all copper ones? My friend Jason down the road did that because we were having this problem on his farm. So he spent like $160 on a pair of all 100% copper jumper cables off Amazon. The wires were copper inside, I checked them, but they quit working after like 10, 15 times, the same as the other ones. So they made the wires copper in those, but these were still electroplated steel, believe it or not. So they completely ripped him off. I've got one opened up in the vise here. And another way you can tell if it's aluminum, you know, if you can't tell if it's super light, is you'll see on the cut end of the wire how silvery and shiny it is. It's not copper all the way through. I'm having a hard time focusing on this, but you can kind of see it here that it's a different color on the very ends of these little strands here. Don't get me wrong either, aluminum is a great, great conductor, especially copper coated aluminum, but very small strands of aluminum like this does not work. Once you get down past a certain size with aluminum, it turns into dust and just almost evaporates. It corrodes so quickly. If you've seen this, you'll know what I'm talking about. And unfortunately, a lot of the crap we're buying nowadays that requires copper, they are throwing electroplated aluminum into. Now what I use to fix these is some flux core solder I get off Amazon. I intentionally look for tin lead solder with real lead in it because nothing works better than lead in my opinion. I'm using my torch. I have a little micro pocket torch here that I love. I ordered this off Amazon too. I'll actually post a link for it in the description because I love this thing. I'll see if I can still find it. I don't make any money off that link, but this is the best little butane torch I've ever bought. And I've bought a lot of them. I always keep one of these in my pocket or you can use a soldering iron. Now you're gonna need a really powerful one to work with this size stuff here. What I'm gonna do is we have the end of the aluminum wire and it's clamped around the electroplated copper here, right here, and I'm gonna cover all this with solder and that's my first step. I'm just gonna completely cover the end of the wire, the strands, these, uh, this place where it's clamped, this electroplated steel part down here, all that where it's making contact, I'm gonna just fill that with solder. I've always been able to solder this stuff, especially if it's newer. If you're doing this with older jumper cables, you're probably gonna have to recut the cables and put a fresh section into there. That's filling in really nice. You wanna try and cover the, the ends of the aluminum wire because that's where the corrosion gets. And what I wanna do is I wanna make a path of solder from here all the way to the contact area where it's gonna contact the battery terminal or whatever. Off camera, I already cut a section of copper pipe out. This is a three quarter copper pipe, just hard pipe. You can use any kind of copper that you want, any piece of copper, but that's just what I had and what I'm using and what's most available to people out there. And 
I cut a chunk of it off, pounded it flat. And what I do is I'll take a little chunk of this and I'll cut it and I'll solder it here on the edge of these teeth and I'll make a, a new section of teeth with it. I'll show you what I mean. Perfect. I have an alligator clip here. These are really handy when I'm soldering. I use them a lot to the inside of here. There we go. Get you a close up here. See how good that's soldered in there. And then we have a big path of solder also to that chunk that I made. Completely covered the end of the wire. These are good to go. So I'll just do one tooth basically or one section. Now you can do all these sections and it would probably be better and it would probably have better conductivity. But I've found over the years that this works excellent just like this. And I've done other jumper cables like it. Well, I'm gonna do the rest of them now and just solder the living heck out of that while it's new and I still have a copper coating. You could also try just soldering the end of your electroplated teeth and seeing if that works. That would probably work too and give them really good conductivity as long as you had a solder beam all the way to your wire. But I hope this helps. These will last for decades if you do this and you don't have to spend a ridiculous amount on real copper ones. Until the next time, be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally and do your best. We'll see you on the next one.